Okay, we are gonna kill two birds with one stone here. We are going to prune this oak tree, remove some of the branches that hang down a little bit low, the branches that kind of catch you when you're going by on the lawn mower and try and pull you off the lawn tractor. Not that I mow an awful lot of lawn, but um, I don't like mowing lawn. But we're gonna prune some of these little branches off of here and use them as part of our mock scrape tree project. Genevieve and I, she's working the camera today, but uh, we've done this every year for the last several years. We've sort of increased the number of mock scrapes that we have these licking branches. And these oak branches look, work great for licking branches because they're nice and sturdy. They hold up to deer pressure. They take a screw real good if you cut them off about thumb size, three quarters of an inch or so at the end of it. You get a nice long sturdy branch and the end result is it holds that screw into my mock scrape trees that I put in, those posts that I put in in the last video I did on this subject. Check out that video. This isn't gonna make sense if you haven't watched that video already, but go watch that video. Got all those trees put in, they're all in place, and these branches are gonna be put in there. We're gonna drill some holes and put these branches in there. And we'll do that now. So we're gonna cut off some of these branches and load up the ranger here. I already got one little maple branch. You can use any kind of branch for this. It really isn't gonna matter. I have just found that they really like the oak branches and they eat these leaves. It's, it's just an extra little bit of attraction. And I happen to have the one oak tree on this whole property pretty much is this tree, the one that's in the yard. So, uh, and it's a pin oak. It's got real small acorns on it. So, but it works great for this purpose. So we're gonna take some of these branches off now and get going. All right, we're back at the well pad food plot. We've got the, we just kicked out a couple of deer right up over the edge of the well pad. They ran off of here. So uh, the place is working. They're enjoying this place. The clover's hanging in there. One last year, I keep saying every year, I'm gonna till this under in the fall and plant turnips, but the clover looks pretty good. In fact, it's pretty green. I've gone through and fertilized, gone through here, and we've done the uh, liming and all that good stuff. So this is a pretty healthy food plot. Should be doing pretty good. The, got the, uh, all the, see if I can see them there. All the oak tree branches are here on the back of the ranger. We're gonna haul them out of here. Genevieve is gonna haul them out of here. I'll get to drill in the holes. And what we're gonna do is drill holes in the posts and then attach the oak branches and make a fake tree that the, the, those deer that just ran out of here will come back and enjoy, hopefully. <laughs> See how it goes. Genevieve and I just about had a heart attack. We just, as I walked out into the clover food plot here to get ready to go here into the food plot the, uh, to get started on this project, uh, turkey flew out of here and all our poles flew out of here. They're still down in there clucking, making a racket, but man, when you're that close to them and they take off, it does, it still got my heart rate up a little bit. I almost died. Well, this is the first of the elm posts. This is the first one that I put in. It's the uppermost one of the well pad food plot. We are going to put this bad boy, put some screws in this, some holes in it first. Then we're going to put screws in it. I've got a three quarter inch paddle bit. We sort of eyeballed them to make sure all of the branches are no bigger than three quarters of an inch and Genevieve went and made sure that they were smaller than the bit. I brought a couple of bits because this is elm. This stuff is hard. It's been sitting here for an extra year on the ground so it's probably still pretty dense. Uh, this stuff lasts a long time. That's the high, that's the good part of it. But the bad part of it is it's going to be very hard to drill. So I brought a couple bits just in case they go dull on me. We're going to go about 45 inches up is what uh, I've read some people have talked about. So we're gonna be somewhere in this range. You know, I'm gonna, I, I put on three branches on each one at least, hanging out at different heights, and that way they've got their options as for what they scrape on. So it should work out pretty good. So we'll get to drilling. One other little tip on this stuff, I guess, would be the angle in which you want your branches to come out. I'm gonna be on the other side of the well pad food plot. Remember in the last video that I did on this, when I put these posts in the ground, I used a range finder to figure out that I would be about 20 yards and 30 yards or whatever it was, but an even distance, an even yardage distance, something that's comfortable for me from the blind. I'm probably gonna put the blind right over there along that side of the well pad food plot. But you want your branches sticking out. Now this one's about six feet high. It's too high for them to scrape unless they get a branch that hangs down and I'll do that. But you want the branches sticking out at an angle where when the deer come into it, they're, they're gonna line up with it and we want their backs to me. I don't wanna put the branches on this side because then the deer will be facing me and I can't get a shot that way. So they, I could actually shoot a deer conceivably over one of these scrapes while they're using the scrape if their back is to me. Uh, if I get a quartering away shot, a proper shot. So what I've done is put these holes in here and we're just gonna put these branches in here like this and I'll put a screw in 
at an angle just to hold it in place. And now I've got, as the branch hangs down, as you can see, these branches are about 45 inches off the ground, the leaves are. So as long as those leaves last, um, you know, the deer will have a scrape there and they will put the scrape right here. They'll put the mock scrape right there and use this as the looking branch. The nice thing about this is once this branch is worn out, I can go get another branch, cut this off. I can not cut it off, but just unscrew the screw, take the branch out, put a new, use the same screw and put a new branch in there. Just throw this in the weeds and we're good to go. All right, well, here is the finished product. One of four scrape trees, licking branches and whatnot that we put in on this well pad food plot. Down at the far end is the one that I put in a few years back. You might remember that. Those of you watching Death by Bungie back then, you saw that one put in. Those of you who have been on the Facebook page would remember it as well, because I did some uh, updates on that. I post a lot of trail camera pictures that I had over that mock scrape tree. That one was a real success. And I know from watching deer movement going up and down along the edge of this food plot that this one will be successful also. These ones will be, I hope. So we'll see. I've got them in. There are three new ones, all with oak branches, elm trunks put in. The one at the very bottom is an old maple trunk. We ran out of oak trimmings, so we had to actually use the loppers there and cut off some more branches down there to fix that one up. A few little tips for these. Uh, for one thing, I recommend that you use uh, probably a two and a half inch screw would be ideal. Anything longer than that tends to get a little hard to get it out the next year when you go to replace the branches. The other suggestion I would make is that you use, I'm trying this year, galvanized screws. I don't think there's a problem with the screws rotting out and this kind of stuff. I'm not worried about that, but I think they're, they do tend to rust and I think they'll be easier to get out if they're galvanized. I, you know, for what it's worth, I don't know if that makes a big difference. I'm also using the square drive, the square bit uh, screws so that I can get the heads, so that I can get those screws out a little bit easier. They seem to come out a little easier in my experience here. And the galvanized ones tend to have that square head, so that works. The ones on the very bottom are the Phillips head, and those are a pain to get in and out, but it is what it is. You, get, you break them loose, they come out pretty easy. So it's not too hard. You want to make it as easy as possible to change the branches in and out for future years because the point of this thing if it works out is to leave this in place and enjoy it for years and years and years down the road this isn't a this isn't just something i'm doing this year as a quick fix this is something that will the deer will use that they will enjoy for years and years and that i will enjoy as well one thing I will throw out there is you're going to want to bring several batteries with you because you're going to run out of battery juice. If you do it like this, you're going to end up running out of juice. So bring some spare batteries with you. That's always a good idea. A few extra bits. I did lose a bit during this process, so that's laying in there somewhere. I couldn't find it. So bring lots of bits so you can, you know, finish the job without having to go back up to the barn to get another bit. So there's that. But I just basically angle them in there good, put them in at the angle you want so that they're going up or down or whatever angle you want, and run a screw in there, sort of kitty cornered, angle it in there, goes in the hole through the branch and into the trunk, and it'll hold it right in place just like just like a regular tree. So they, they don't fall out as a general rule. The deer will work these branches, they will break these branches, and these branches will be broken and worn out and rot before they fall out of here. I haven't had any fall out, and if they do fall out, it's not a big deal. Just bring a drill with you, pull them out, put a new one in there, screw it in tight, whatever you gotta do. So, not a big deal. Um, you're really not out of anything, and it's like I said, it's a long-term project. You can work on this long-term and make changes to it as you go. The next question a lot of people are gonna have is, how do you get these things started? How do you get the deer to start working them? Do you have to use deer urine to put in here? In the past, I've used some scrape things, grave digger. I put that under the dirt, dug it in good. That works, no, no complaints there. It works, no, no question it attracts deer. I've bought some of the glands, scents and stuff like that to put on the branches. No reason to believe that doesn't work. But to be honest with you, I think location is number one with this stuff. If you have this set up in the right spot, you don't need to add anything. You don't have to do a thing to it. I did take a hoe, freshen up the dirt a little bit there. I scraped the dirt under the branches so that the deer, as they're feeding in the food plot here, in the clover food plot, they'll smell the fresh dirt and investigate it and say, hey, wait a minute, there's these branches here that weren't here before. 
That's all you got to do. In my experience, if this is in the right place, if it's where they want to have a scrape, if it's where they want licking branches, they will work this for you. There will be a scrape here next week. So the only thing left to do is pitch a camera right over there on the tree, which I have done, pitch a camera up there so that it is taking footage of the mock scrape. So we'll have evidence of it down the road and be able to see whether they use it. To find out if this works, what you're gonna have to do is continue to tune into Death by Bungie. Make sure you subscribe and I'll give you updates as the season progresses. We're almost into the crossbow season here. How exciting is that? The other thing I'll suggest that you do is check out our Facebook page because on the Facebook page, I. Uh, update you weekly with how this stuff works and i tell you best i can anyway what works and what doesn't so uh, share all that information on there so be sure to check out the facebook page if you haven't already and until next time all hail bungee the second state is number one in my book i almost died